It happens to all of us. You look in the mirror and, oh no, there's another grey hair. What do you blame? Hadza, the first thing that comes to mind is stress. It's the intuitive answer. Now a team of researchers based out of Cambridge, Massachusetts have pieced together why when little Jenny does something dangerous and stupid, mom acquires a couple more grey hairs. Join us for this episode of Better Body Chemistry TV as we explore the biology behind going grey. Better Body Chemistry TV is brought to you by Dr. Sandy, a scientist turned gremlin buster helping you battle sugar gremlins, heifer lumps and other health horribles through better body chemistry. Remember, small things can make a big difference to your health. So let's take a look at what's happening in the hair follicles. Now, for the most part, hair follicles are pretty quiet places, except during anagen. Anagen is an exciting time inside the hair follicle. It's when new hairs are formed, and it requires two distinct populations of stem cells. The first are the cells that are actually responsible for making the new hair. They're the hair follicle stem cells and they live in the basement of the hair follicle in an area referred to as the bulge. They initiate anagen by actively dividing to create the tiny wisp that elongates to become a beautiful new hair. They use prevailing body chemistry conditions to decide if and when anagen should happen. But once anagen has started, they're largely impervious to stressful events. The other guys, known as the melanocyte stem cells, live in the penthouse of the hair follicle. They keep a watchful eye on the activities of the cells in the basement. If and when anagen starts, they feel motivated to join the party. So they divide in two. One cell stays in the penthouse and the other goes down to join in the festivities. As they descend the stairs, they mature to become melanocytes. And as melanocytes, well, they're pretty colorful characters. As soon as they arrive in the basement, they start coloring the baby hair cells, giving them their ruddy complexion. Now, once a melanocyte cell has painted up a storm, there is no going back. No worries. This is why one stays in the penthouse and one goes down to the party. Now, back in the penthouse, life is pretty relaxed. The hair seasons change. Anagen becomes telogen. The rest phase and then telogen becomes catagen, the degeneration phase, and then one morning it's anagen again. The melanocyte stem cells divide, half leave to celebrate, and the rest stay behind. Now, living in a penthouse is fabulous, but it does have a few drawbacks. The biggest one when you're high up on the edge, high winds can be rather disruptive. And every now and again, a puff of norepinephrine is released from the peripheral nerves that surround the hair follicles. Norepinephrine is the neurotransmitter of the sympathetic nervous system. He's a mover and shaker. His motto float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. And as he blows through the penthouse, he shakes up all the melanocyte stem cells, taking their post anagen siesta. In the wake-up shake-up, those on the inside hunker down. Those on the outside often get swept up in the wind. And depending on the prevailing currents, sometimes they float up, 
Sometimes they drift down and sometimes they sink like a ton of bricks. The end result? The penthouse is seriously depopulated. If high winds are the norm, and they are in someone who faces regular bouts of acute stress, the depopulation leads to desertion. And the desertion means that when anagen happens, there are no melanocytes sent to the ceremony. The hair still grows, but it lacks the vibrant colors of the early years. The stress, which blows up the kind of storm that causes melanocyte stem cells to blow out of their hair follicle, happens to all of us. It's our flight and fright response. It's meant to be a fleeting stress, that is, it comes on fast and moves off fast. Now, when it's just a short blast, it's potentially damaging, but it's not as problematic as when the acute stress lasts for an extended period of time. Um, an example of this is Maria Antoinette. She was a villain of the French Revolution. Her acute stress probably lasted for several hours, and it was enough to turn her hair grey overnight. Unfortunately, both modern living and bad body chemistry can leave your system dominated by the sympathetic nervous system, which is not going to turn your hair grey overnight, but it could leave you grey before your time, so to speak. So do what you can to keep those stress levels down for yourself and try not to give your mom more grey hairs because of your antics. Looking for ideas and strategies to create better body chemistry? Visit our website at www.betterbodychemistry.com. Browse our library, enroll in one of our courses or programs. The advice is simple to follow and based on real science, not hype. Know someone whose life is particularly stressful? Share this video with them so that they realize stress does cause gray hairs. It's more than an expression. It's a biological truth. And if this is your first time here, be sure to subscribe to our channel so you can discover more tips and strategies that will help you create better body chemistry and better health. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Remember, small things can make a big difference to your health.